All right, we're in. Oh, is it not letting you share? All right, you got me started. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. You are tuned in to the Guiding Lights International Ministries Prayer and Bible Study Line. This is the Friday Night Lights edition, and I am your co-host, Pastor Paul McCoy of the Church of God in Christ of Faith Tabernacle in Illinois with my co-host, Pastor Mark McCoy of the New Harvest E Church in Alabama. We, as always, thank and praise God for his grace and his mercy and his love that he has shown us throughout our lives. We are always thankful to be able to be in the house of God and anywhere that we are present and we are in the presence of Christ is the house of God. So we are so thankful for this moment. Um, uh, excuse me, as I go back and forth, I am just trying to get everything tuned in because honestly, this is the first time I've actually done it this way. So we are thankful for you all that are able to see us and that are possibly listening to this broadcast on the conference line and those of you that are on Facebook Live, you're probably wondering, well, what is he about to talk about? Well. I'll tell you, I'm about to talk about what I'm about to talk about. This month has been the month of overcoming. We've talked about we, as people of God, those of us that are in Christ Jesus are overcomers through Christ, through his word, through his methods, through himself. And we're in. They say they can't hear me on the conference call. Hmm. Hold on just a second. I'm going to keep this rolling, though. Just one second, everybody. Can you hear me now? If you can, uh, comment yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's get let's get started, peoples. Excuse me if you see me looking down. It's because I'm going through my notes, and I'm actually reading from my my text. As I stated before, we talked about the concept of overcoming adversities, and things of our life through Christ Jesus. It has put us in a position. Whereas we have to set ourselves at a higher spiritual standard than the world. And this mainly focuses upon any and everything that we do. A lot of people get this confused. They believe that this gives them an opportunity to be, feel that they are better than the world. And yes, in so many cases, we are. But that is only because of Christ. That is only because of God and God alone, not because of ourselves. I mean, that's the reason why we have to make sure we get we get this really understood and that we are on the same page. The foundation of being an overcomer is Christ. It is the teachings of Christ. It is understanding that Christ must be first and foremost in our lives, in everything that we do. As I said before, tonight, we're going to take a little bit of a turn. Now, according to uh, the theme text, we talked about being an overcomer from the book of First John, chapter 4, verse 4, the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 11, and the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 21. Tonight, we're going to move into another realm of this. And I'm hoping that everybody can follow me. But before we begin, uh, let us have a quick moment of prayer. Lord God, first off, we thank you. We honor you. We love you. 
We love you because you are good and because of your mercy and because of your grace. We love you and we thank you because of the fact that you have been with us through any and all of our situations, those that are good and those that are not. And we thank you before we ask anything for this day. We thank you for this moment in time that we have never seen. We ask you to continuously bless us and keep us and guide us through each and every trial and tribulation that we may, that we may face. Because we know that with you all things are possible. The overcoming of any and all situations are possible through you, and we thank you for that right now. And we ask you to bless us and keep us continuously. And those that are listening on this line, those that are watching on the live broadcast, we ask you to continuously bless us and keep us. And we ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God. All right. What we're going to do is, for those that are familiar with the word, we're going to, to do a classic scripture. We're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. A lot of you probably already know where I'm going with this because many have read this scripture time and time and time again, this whole verse era time and time and time again. But the reason why we're doing it now is in order to focus on overcoming. It is still about overcoming. Amen. Amen. Now, let me make sure I got this right. I don't want to sit back here and tell you the wrong thing. Uh, sometimes we put one instead of two and all that good stuff. And just one second. First Corinthians 13. Verses 1 through 8 and 13. And I'm just going to briefly read this and then we'll go into the actual subject line. And I'm reading from the King James Version. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and I have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and though I have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffers long, and it's kind, charity Envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, and is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bearing all things, believing all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, charity never faileth, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail, where there be tongues, they shall cease, where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Verse 13, it says, now abide faith, hope, charity. These three, the greatest of these is charity. We're going to talk about, I'm not sure how long this is going to go, but it's, it's going to go whatever ways it goes. We're going to talk about overcoming the desire to love like the world or overcoming tough love. All right. Let's discuss this thing called tough love. Now, it's known and previously discussed that the enemy is, you know, taking time to doppelganger or mimic the word of God in every aspect, way, shape, or form. Specifically, the one thing the word is based on, and that's love. It's a dangerous, there's many dangerous duplications of love that we confuse every day. The world confuses love with so many different things, materialism, fashion, power prestige, all these things. One of the most deadly ones, which is a part of the seven deadly sins, as they call them, is lust. For it is strictly of the flesh. Now, we understand this. It's not love. A lot of people confuse it with love. They get into this fleshly connection, and then they think that it's love. It is designed to corrupt the inner man and to bring that inner man to the gates of hell. Yet as the sons and daughters of God, as we are the sons and daughters of God, and as we've learned of it, we try to keep ourselves mindful of this. We try to keep a focus and try to differentiate love from lust. Sometimes we do, a lot of times we don't get it. Because of the deceptions and the temptations that come from it, I mean, let's 
thinking about this. Love can be very deceiving and tempting and tempting lust can be very deceiving and tempting especially when it's confused and it's mimicked as love it's fashioned as love it's packaged like love but then it's not now one of the subtle expressions of love that has grown in strength and in acceptance is this thing called tough love tough defines let's look at the word tough first tough defines as a physically as being physically or emotionally strong and this is the definition that the world tries to use to justify using tough love on itself and others I mean everybody said it we've heard it before on television and the radio and all different areas I am trying to trying to implement tough love on my children I'm trying to show them tough love I'm trying to show them discipline through love to make it tough so that they will appreciate me or appreciate my, my ways or appreciate what I do and or what I say. This is the concept of tough love for, for our world. Now, the opposite of tough love is tender. Tough, tender. Tender defines as gentle, but it's also having the definition of being painful when touched. We also define tender as being soft and easily broken or fragile. When tender love or a version of tender love is broken, we then resort to making it tough. Nobody likes to, be, to have that tenderness. They want to, because it seems weak. A lot of us as men, when we are boys, are taught to be tough in everything that we do. We confuse that with strong. And usually when we are taught to be tough, we are then taught to be difficult to deal with. We are taught to be difficult to digest. We become looked at as violent, hard to influence, and we ultimately hurt others rather than help. So a lot of you have accepted the terms of tough love. And as overcomers through Christ, we cannot afford to follow the world's definition of love. We cannot afford to sit back here and become difficult to deal with. And usually this is based upon our desire, our ultimate desire to honestly control the situation. When we see that our children are being rebellious, when we see that our children are not appreciating the love that we give them or that we think we're giving them, then we resort to something more difficult to stomach. We resort to it becoming tough because we find that, as we said, the tenderness of love becomes painful. That's the reason why we start to callous it over, thus making it tough. Overcomers that are subject to this, those that have followed the terms of the word, that, that have considered themselves Christians, men and women, sons and daughters of God, fall into this trap many times, especially within the church. We come into the church and we start to love on each other. And then when people, when the enemy starts to try to infiltrate and we think that these, the saints of God is not accepting our love, then we start to make it callous. We get all captured in our feelings. We start to lose the sight of the love of God, the pure essence of God, and then we move to this toughness. And it's usually try to, we're trying to protect ourselves. At least that's what we think we're doing. We're really hurting ourselves more, but we don't know this. But this situation has became out of hand, so we need to do something to bring it back under our control, especially with love. We think that we, you know, we're, under, we're in control of all this. And then we lose sight of God. We start to do the world's bidding when it comes to love, and then next, you know, we have this unflavored love. Let, 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 let's look at it from a let's look at it from a standpoint of food. Let's look at it from the, uh, a tough steak. Everybody that is probably that's listening right now and watching on uh, Facebook Live has came across a tough steak once in your life. Now, when you look when you have a tough steak, what happens? It's not tender. It's chewy. 
It's unappetizing. It has no flavor, no real flavor. And then what do you do? You end up wanting to throw it away, take it back. I don't want this. Why? Because it's tough. I can't eat it. I can't absorb it. It's an app. I don't, I don't like this because your body's not used to the toughness of it. But then when they bring you a tender steak, it has all this flavor. It's soft, easy to digest. It's wonderful. You can cut it with a butter knife. And you love it because you chew on it and it just breaks down and all the flavors burst in your mouth and you're so excited, you're happy to have it. Why? Why not take that back? You know, it's tender, right? But for some reason, when you receive something tough, you, you reject it. So why are we trying to invoke tough love upon our people? Upon our children, upon those in the church, those at our job, my family members. Why, why is it okay for them to have something unappetizing, but not us? <laughs> now, if y'all don't mind, we're gonna we're, we're still gonna keep moving forward. I want to go to First um, John, if you don't mind, chapter four. First John, chapter four, verses five through 10. Now, in this concept, what I, what I realize is that, what I realize is that um, from, this, from this word, it, it, it still ties into what we talked about when it comes to overcomers. As First John chapter four, verse four says, you are of God, little children, ever overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When he that is in you is, is God, then the love that you have is tender, it's pure, it's able to be digested, people accept it. So then we go down to five and it says, why is it that this love from the world is tough? Because it is of the world. You are of the world, therefore you speak of the world and the world heareth you. Those that have tender love, as the old song, I forgot who it was, what that, what that uh, group, I think it's, God, is it full force or force MD? They had this one song, tender love, love so tender. Bring me close to you, baby, I surrender. They knew that tender love is accepted. Now they would speak, they were singing something secular, but they tied it in, tender love. Love so tender. Something that can be digested, accepted, gathered, embraced. It says, we are of God. This is verse number six, chapter, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 6 says, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. See, when you get into this tough love, it's hard for you people to hear you. It's hard for people to understand you because you're out of your character. You're out of your base character. When you are loving tough, you are loving of the world. So then you become something different than your true nature. So those that you are expecting to hear you, that you're invoking this tough love on, they don't know what you're talking about. Hereby know we spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. Here's the point, here's the problem. Yeah, it says, beloved, let us love one another. But then people stop there because then they start to overdefine the, the term or misdefine the term love. Then it becomes something, then it can become lust, it can become something of the world because we 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 love to follow the world's guide on almost everything. Why? Because the enemy, as I said before at the beginning, has made doppelgangers of everything of the word of God, especially those things that are that are based upon God. And what is based upon God? Love. And it says, and it says, beloved, let us one another. Why? For God is of love is of God. And everyone that love is, is born of God and knoweth God. So we're saying that when you love tender, when you love of God and, and the tender love that God has for every last one of us, God has never sat back here and gave tough love to people. It's just that it's really love that we can't understand and or accept. But it's not tough, though. It's not tough at all. And he's saying, for love is of God and everyone that loveth 
is born of God. So to birth, to start something anew, he's saying that everyone that loveth becomes anew in God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, that loveth not, knoweth not God. Why? For God is love. Now, if we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and we start to look at the actual concept, and I'm going to come back to this because I want to tie this in. If we go back and say, well, God is love, well, that is, what does that actually mean? What does that mean, God is love? What it says is, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number three, I'm just going to, well, verse number four, I'm just going to move through what love is. And, what, and, and if you find tough in there, please tell me because I may not see it. I don't know. Sometimes I, you know, these glasses can miss stuff. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity is, is not jealous. It doesn't buff itself up. It, it's not puff itself up. See, but tough love is impatient. It is not kind. It is sometimes based upon jealousy. And it is puffed up. It's based upon having power, having control. It doesn't behave itself unseemly, but tough love does. When people that are invoking tough love, they act a fool. Seeketh not his own. But then tough love seeketh its own because it seeketh control of others. It seeketh its own power. It seeketh its own standing in people's lives by force. It is not easily provoked. Tough love is, is nothing but provocation. It thinketh no evil. Now, we even got to ask, we got to talk about this one. Because in order sometimes to, to invoke tough love, you have to do some evil things. Rejoice is not in iniquity. But see, those that invoke tough love love to see the falling of others. Isn't that the point? But rejoice is rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things. Tough love doesn't bear anything but itself. Believes all things. Tough love don't believe in anything but itself. Hopeth all things. Tough love don't hope in anything at all. Endureth all things. Tough love is not about enduring. Even though it says tough, it still cannot endure. Charity never fails, but tough love fails constantly. And you ask, well, why? Why does tough love fail? Because, like I said, with the tough state, people reject it. We have tough food. You give it away. You throw it away. You give it to the dog. You take it back. You say, I want a refund. You don't want that. You don't take that home. You don't want to deal with it. Who wants to deal with something that is tough that I cannot, I cannot ingest? So when you sit back here, you have, you are served tough love from someone. The first thing you do is you get rid of it because it has failed to be received. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall seek. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. And then it says, now by the hope, faith, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Why? Because it is of God, because it is God. And it is tender. It is something that any and everyone in this world can ingest. It is something that can help you. It is something that your body and your heart and your soul and your mind and everything must receive. But tough love, those of us overcomers, I'm talking to the overcomers that are listening and are watching this, tough love is dangerous. It's deadly. The whole purpose of it is to destroy. All right, let's go back to First John chapter 4, because I want to I wanna actually finish this. Usually, I'm, usually I kind of kind of briefly summarize, but I found out this is actually going to run a bit. So I hope you all are, I hope you all are still following me. As we say, we are of God, and this is verse 6. I'm just going to read through it real quick. He has knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God doesn't hear us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us not let us love one another for God, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. He that he that knoweth God and knoweth God. He that loveth not know does not no, loveth not, knoweth not God. It always kind of gets me tripped up. He that don't love, don't love, don't know God. Why? Because God is love. It, this in this was manifested the love of God towards us because that love sent he is the only begotten son. Let's stop right there. The tender love of God for his people, even though these people, even though we all 
detested and and found any in any in every way in any and every excuse to get and to forsake God. God still showed enough love that was tender enough to endure the pain of the sacrifice of the Christ. For who? What does tough love sacrifice? Not itself. Not anyone. It destroys, yes. It creates chaos, yes, but it does not sacrifice. He's saying that the love of God was so tender for us that he sacrificed the one that he loved the most into the world that we might live through him so that we can then receive the tender love of God. Herein is love, and I'm going to verse 10. And here's a good one. Not that we love God. Right? It's not because of our love for God that God shared his son or the love of God is so tender. It ain't because of us. So he's saying there's no reciprocation here. It didn't start because you love God or I love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, to be the one that that st stood in front of our sins. Where can you ever find overcomers, my overcomers? Where can you ever find love like that? Now I realize something, babies, that the difference, there's a difference between being tough and being strong. No. The love of God is strong enough to endure the ages. It's, the love of God is strong enough to endure our our hatred, our rebellion, our lies, our deception. But yet it is not tough because it is tender and how it comes, how it then, how it's received, how it's shared with us daily. Every day we wake up in love. My old pastor, Pastor Chandler, we always say in his prayer, thank you, Father, for, for touching me this morning with the finger of love. Hey, man, I used to love when he said that because he, he made it quite clear. It wasn't my alarm clock, people. It wasn't by my function. It wasn't by my biological clock or function the, or the eight-hour process. He said it was the finger of love that brought me that brought me to this life, that woke me up this morning, that opened my eyes to a new day. And God loved me so much. Me alone at this point, he singled out his love for me through the the sacrifice of his son for my sins that he decided I'm going to let you live another day. And he touched me with the finger of love. Did I deserve it? Of course not. I think I'm hearing that it's not transmitting. Is there anything I need to do? Okay. Sorry, everyone. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Hold on. Oh. Can you hear me? I mean, the live session is still rolling. All right. So I'll keep, you want me to keep, keep going? Mm -hmm. oh. 
Okay. Okay, do you what do I need to just stop the Facebook Live? You can't hear me on the conference call? Now we can hear you well. Okay. What about what about the live feed? Should I stop that? Oh, ooh, that's kind of yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I've been rolling since then. No, oh, but you, huh? Okay, I said we we couldn't hear you on the conference call. Okay. So for some reason it just keeps blanking out. Mm. Mm. Okay. those of you that are um if you're still watching this uh, this live feed what we would what we would request that you do is if you would like you can contact if you want to continue to hear this you can contact this number that I'm about to um, give you um it's area code 910 218 Zero five three one. There's no pin. Nine. Eric O nine one zero two one eight zero five three one. We're gonna end the count. We're gonna end this now and move over to the uh, to the uh, the conference line and try to finish this up. Uh, we may have to rehash a bit because I'm gonna figure out where everybody left off so we can go back around. All right. I'm sorry about this. Sometimes this happens, but we uh, we're gonna keep moving forward. We're not gonna stop. All right. Hopefully everybody can call in. See you all in a moment. God bless you and God keep you.